Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of I Can't Leave Anything Alone. So what I got going on is I've been kind of just tweaking stuff here and there. One of the things I noticed and I kind of talked about before is I did put a coolant pressure sensor in the truck, just something I've always kind of wanted to watch, don't know really much about, you know. So I put that in it and as I'm doing logs, I'm noticing that the pressure was kind of eating kind of high and then started doing a little bit of research and decided to change the location of it. So right now my bench behind me, I'm actually gonna take it and put it after the thermostat because initially I had it in the truck and it was next to thermostat housing. So I'm thinking because it's before the thermostat, I'm getting a false reading because the stuff I read said it needs to be you know, in the radiator somewhere. So the well, radiator's plastic, so that's not gonna work. So the closest place I could get it was in the housing after the thermostat. So I'll show you, I'm working on that right now. Over here, getting ready to TIG weld it out. Um, another thing I did over, I think it was yesterday, is I took this thing over to the buddy's house and put it on the lift and actually moved the uh, Caltrack bar angle in hopes to take some of the anti-squat out of it. One of the things I'm wondering through these testing tunes is maybe I've got a little bit too much anti-squat in the truck. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But, you know, that's what they call it, test and tune. So we're going to try everything. So what I did is basically the way this truck's lowered is the front leaf spring mount, aftermarket is Belltech, which makes that, takes that mount, actually raises it up on the frame and turn lowers the truck. When you move that mount up, it actually adds more anti-squat. So between that and putting the bar at a steep angle, it has a lot of anti-squat. So, so I was kind of wondering if it was too much. So what I did is I can't adjust the front of that bar like most cow tracks because... The way the truck is lowered, it only allows me uh, the bottom hole as a position. So the front of the bar has to stay there. But with these funk house or brackets that I bought, and there's kind of an example, um, it does have adjustment in the rear. So what I did is I actually had the third hole down and the second hole down is like a stock cow track. So I put it back to that second, uh, second hole, which didn't level them out. They're still going uphill, but just not as aggressive. Unfortunately, it's gonna be like uh, maybe two weeks before testing tunes open again buddy and i'm just kind of give you guys some updates as i change things i just you know show you what's up um show you some of my struggles as you can see these videos so far you know far it, it is what it is it's just the way it goes um but again just want to turn the camera real quick and show you what i'm up to see ya okay we're back uh, it's been a couple days i've been waiting for something to come in i want to talk to you guys about this this arguably could be some of the best data that we can receive using utilizing the ha Holly system, excuse me, utilizing the Holly system for the truck. Um, it's in this box right here. So what I'm holding in my hand is a low dollar motorsports shop travel sensor. What this allows to do is see how the rear and front suspension of the trucks were working. Um, for now, I'm going to start out just by doing the fronts. I'm sorry, the rears. We're going to start out by mounting these things in the rear. And then we'll be able to tell, you know, is the suspension separating, staying separated, or is it separating? And then, you know, starting to compress when it shouldn't, which would tell me that, you know, I need a revalve shock. Or, you know, you've, if you've seen some of the videos, you've seen some of the clips where it appears to be bouncing the tire. So that could be, it could just be bouncing the tire like a basketball because the compression or the tire pressure or something, you know, too much. Or it could just be a revalving thing to where it's separating it, but the shock's compressing when it really should be holding the tire to the track. So this thing right here is gonna allow us to know exactly what the thing's doing. So I'm pretty excited about this. I don't think it's gonna be a crazy install. I did get some uh, Deutsch style connectors for the thing. So we got that also in here. These are the mounting brackets. There's four of them in here. Basically they mount like that. They'll use utilize the bolt for the shock on the top and then you bolt it in like this on the bottom and bolt the thing in or ride side by side with the shock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this truck, uh, kind of move it around and put it up on the cribbing. And then we'll, you know, experiment with how we want these things to sit. The first thing I gotta do is mount it before I actually do any kind of wiring. Um, the wiring doesn't look too difficult. It looks like it's like three wires. Uh, I'll use a five volt reference, a sensor ground, and then a feedback back to the dominator. So uh, without further ado, let me get this thing up on the cribbing and uh, we'll get after it. Okay, up under the truck, I can already tell you without a doubt in my mind, the brackets that are right here, if you can see that, there, isn't going to work. I was going to put one there and there, but the way we have our anti-roll bar set up, let me get some light, with 
the one bar over top of the anti-roll bar, it just doesn't work. You can't get it between the bed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this extra brackets right there, and I'm going to cut them down and up weld them to the upper tube that we put in the frame, uh, you know, forever ago to relocate our shocks. So the bed's got to come off, but that's not the end of the world. I was just hoping I'd be able to bolt that sucker in and be a done deal. But uh, yeah, so probably what I'm going to do is put the truck back down, take and back it in and use my gantry crane. And then I can do it by myself without having to have people come over and help me lift the thing off. So let me shuffle some stuff around. All right, bed's up offer. I'll tell you guys what, I bought that gantry crane actually to do the cab swap, when I do this frame swap on that Cummins outside at some point, but it has been the most useful lift by far. I wish I kind of would have bought it sooner. As you can see, I just put some ratchet straps, made an X in the bed, put my chain foam on it, had somebody uh, steady it and raise the thing up. So now I can get to these, <clears throat> get to the bar that we put in the frame earlier in the year and we'll figure out where them brackets are gonna sit and take the uh, welder over here, get them welded on, remove the paint to get them welded on. And then I'll put the bed back on the thing, get it all bolted up and set. So the sensors are mounted and then we can worry about getting the thing wired in. Let's do it. Okay, so mounts are tacked on or welded on, whatever you wanna call it. They're just teeny tiny little brackets. I got it kind of set the way I wanted to. Let me show you guys real quick because I'm actually getting ready to lower the bed back on and bolt it on the truck. Let me flip the camera around. Uh, you don't need light. So look, one, and if you see all the way over there, but right there is two. So I try to make them as symmetrical as possible and fill it with that VHT roll bar paint. Um, this stuff seems to hold up pretty good. So both uppers are in. Now really, it's kind of just a matter of wiring it. Uh, I had to go to the Home Depot and grab some hardware for it. So I can go ahead and put the bed on, bolt them in, and then start running wires from up under the seat down the frame rail. And then we're gonna have ourselves some good data. So let me get this uh, bed back on. Okay, mounting's done. Got the first one bolted in. So now it's just one of the wiring. I gotta pull the passenger seat out. So let me get it pulled out real quick. And then I got to uh, just do a little wiring loom everything up and then we will uh, look at some of the data see what's up on to the next step okay hours and hours and later uh, I'm gonna show you what we got I've got just the right rear one wired in I got my laptop sitting over here uh, all I have to do is really is button up some of the wiring kind of zip tied up on nice put the interior of the truck back together stuff the seat out I got all that stuff down here straightened up put the seat back in kind of just button everything up uh, that's it and then we'll, we'll be uh, good to go but let me show you guys real quick we'll crawl up under here and check this thing out and I'll show you the date on the laptop just for me uh, moving the thing around excuse all the bumping around okay so get some light for us so there's a connector I just zip tied it to the bar up there runs down the frame rail so I've got the thing hanging right now. So if we move this thing out like this, and then we roll it back like this, we'll see the data on the laptop. So let's scoot over here real quick. Fire this thing up. Okay. So again, excuse the jarring around. So you see, if you see down there on the left hand side, right there, it says right rear shock. So, uh, try to do this, hard to do with one hand, like there. So this is pushed all the way up and it goes to zero and then we'll move it, extend it real slow and you see the graph going up, then almost eight. So there she is, looks pretty good. So all I gotta do is bolt the left side in, wire the connector on it and that stuff will be ready to go. But pretty cool, I'm excited. Okay guys, I'm gonna end it here next, let's see, a week from now, so today's Sunday. Next Sunday, there's supposed to be a test and tune at my local track. It'll be a good chance for us to test out this shock travel sensor and let me know what the suspension's doing in the rear of the truck. Hopefully, and in, in hopes that we get the 60 foot down, obviously we'll be filming that, because I'm just really curious to see how it, uh, how it goes. So this is exciting. Um, again, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I gave you some inspiration, uh, you know, 
more data the better in the future i think i still want to do drive shaft speed and at some point maybe we'll put these uh you know a couple sensors on the front too to watch the shocks in the front but again thanks for watching and hopefully next time you see us we will be hitting another testing tune see ya